Hello, in this final video, I'm going to be talking about parallel arrays and multidimensional arrays and how you can use parallel arrays to do a search. Parallel arrays uh, are when you use the same subscript to uh, in a second array holding corresponding data to access additional information. So for example, the the application that I'm going to go through with you as an example is if you have one array of strings that is a list of student names and a second array of their grades. So element zero in the array of students might be Bob and element zero in the grades is uh, Bob's grade on a given uh, assignment. Element one corresponds to Jane in the names array and to Jane's score in the scores array. Um, this is called a sequential search, um, what I have on this slide, uh, using a loop uh, to go through and look for uh, the value of an array and then find its sequence in the array. So what's going on in this example is uh, we have a for loop that starts from zero and goes through uh, the length of the valid values array. And so for each element of that array, we test whether the um, uh, the value, some value, maybe the user input this value item ordered, is equal to that the element of that array. And if it is, uh, then we mark this Boolean variable as true. Uh, this is kind of vague. I think it will make more sense as we go through a specific example in um, Visual Studio. And so uh, let's pull that up. I'm gonna pull up Visual Studio. No, right now I still have open uh, the example from the previous video. We're gonna be done with that one. We're gonna create a new project, uh, Windows Forms application. I'm gonna call this one Student Scores. Now this, um, this application, what it's going to do is it's going to, um, find the score of a given student. This will make more sense as, uh, as I work through the example here with you. So first on my form, I'm going to add a text box. And I'm going to call that the student name text box. I'm going to add a label. And uh, the default text for that label will be, please enter a student's name. And then I will have a button. I will have it say go, and I will call it the go button. And then I will have another label which I will call output label. And I will have it say that student's score is. And so what I want to happen is if I type in Bob and click go, it's gonna show Bob's score on this assignment. So I will double click on the go button and create, which will create the go button click event method. Now I'm going to create some arrays and as is best practice, I'm going to create them outside of my event method. Now I'm going to create two parallel arrays. So one is going to be a string uh, array. And I'll call it the student list. 
And that's going and we are uh, going to create that using the new keyword. Um, and this array is going to be of size three. I'll keep it somewhat simple. Whoops, don't want equals there. And then I'm going to initialize it with the values Jane, Bob, and Bill. So those are the three strings. So uh, student list subscript zero is Jane, student list subscript one is Bob, and student list subscript two is Bill. Now I'm going to create a parallel array of scores as doubles. So I'm going to call this the scores list. And this will be a new array of type double, also of size three. And uh, for this example, I'm also going to initialize it. Uh, I could do a different example where I leave the scores list empty and then I go through and uh, for each uh, student, I give them a score. Similar process as I'm going to do with retrieving their score. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to input the values so their scores are uh, 91, 87, and 96. Okay, so as I often do, uh, inside of my event method, the first thing I'll do is save the user input as a separate variable. So in this case, the user is inputting a string, and I'll call that string the student name. And I will collect that from the student name text box text property. Okay, then I'm going to find that student in the array. So for int i equals zero, i less than student list dot length i plus plus. Okay, so this is very typical syntax for using a loop with an array. Start from zero, go to the length of the array. And so what I'm going to do for each element of that array is I'm going to check if student list subscript i, whoops, is equal to what the user input then I'm going to put that student score into the output label. So the output label text is going to be the scores list subscript whoa subscript X. Stop doing that. Not X. I. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay. Well, this is giving me an error because the scores list is an array of doubles and I'm trying to assign a double to text. So I have to convert that dot to string. And actually what I want to do is I want to say that student's score is, okay. So what I've done here is I've used parallel arrays to do a search. So for each 
student in the list. So I go through one by one. So first, uh, I check the first student in the list, which was Jane. Okay, if that matches what the user input, if the user input Jane as the person they wanted to see the score for, then the label will show that student score is uh, scores list I dot to string. Okay, so it's saying, okay, uh, right now our loop control variable is zero, student list subscript is zero, Jane is the uh, number zero position in this list, then we will display the, the number that is in the number zero position of the corresponding scores list. Okay. Uh, if the user did not input Jane, then it won't uh, execute this code, and then it will try again. Okay, the next time through the loop, i equals one, and so it's checking, is student list subscript one equal to what the user input? If it is, then we're going to output uh, the scores list element number one into our output label. So I will test this. So I manually put in three students and I put in their scores. Those must be in the same order in order for this to work, okay? So if we find that Jane is uh, the student name that the user input, then we're going to write out to the label the score that is in the same position of that array. So here, if I type Bob, it should show 87. That student score is 87. If I type Jane, it should show 91. If I type Bill, it should show 96. And if I type something else, it should give me an error. Or no, it won't give me an error. It just won't do anything because it won't ever find that in the list. And so it won't ever change the output label. Okay. 